New York State Commission on Correction is the body that oversees county jails. They have established a series of enumerated mandates that are the minimum standards for the operation of jails in New York State. Meaning, these are the minimum things that we have to provide or do or accomplish inside of our correctional facility as required by the New York State Commission on Correction. Everything we do is oriented towards satisfying those minimum standards. Anything we do above and beyond that is our option. So as an example, we provide cable TV to inmates, but we only provide five channels. We don't have to provide any TV, period, but we do because there is a benefit. It keeps the inmates occupied. And when our focus is on officer safety, if the inmates are engaged, it keeps them from thinking about doing things they might not necessarily want to do, which protects our officers. We regulate the channels that they get. So they get a news channel, they get the weather channel, they get the history channel, they get the food channel, and they get C-SPAN. There's other things, the minimum standard is all they're going to get because there's no need to give them any more than that. They get a certain amount of clothing, socks, t-shirts, underwear, jumpsuits. There's no reason to give them any more than that. The stuff is washed every other day, so they only need a couple of sets. That saves the taxpayers money. I am a vanguard of the taxpayers dollar. So I look at things from a safety and security standpoint, but also from a financial standpoint of what I can do to save the taxpayers money while still providing the minimum standards that we're required to do. And we've done pretty well with it. We've reduced costs significantly over the last couple of years. Alan Weaver is in charge of the Corrections Division, We're responsible for the overall operations of the Corrections Facility. He handles pretty much the daily operations, developing those systems, maintaining those systems, making sure that we stay efficient, seeing problems, areas as they come up, and doing a whole bunch of prevention to keep those problems at a minimum. We wake them up at 6.30, because that's when the lights come on. We'll hand them a request form in their door that they have to fill out for the oncoming shift by 7 o'clock. That's anything they need throughout the day that we provide them. They want anything out of their property, any hygiene items, they have to request it. Grievance forms, they'll have to request it. If they want any information on their courts that we may have updated, they have to request it. Anything they need, they put on that form. They have to stand for count at 645, then after the shift turnover, 7 o'clock, that's when we unlock them. A uh, porter will go to the cafeteria, they'll pick up the cart with the breakfast on it, porter hands that out to everyone, and then they'll do cleanup. Cleanup, they have to clean the whole housing unit and their cells. And then after cleanup's done, then they get the option of going and laying back down. TVs come on at 8 o'clock. Now lunch meal comes in with the porter at 11 o'clock. They serve the meal. And then the officer throughout the day will offer them rec. An hour and a half Monday through Friday. And then they'll just watch TV. They play cards. We have games that they can sign out. We have book carts with self-help books on them. We also have a kiosk where they can go on. They can do their legal research. They can get all their case laws, everything they need. They can go on there. Um, they can order commissary on there. They can purchase emails to correspond with you know people on the outside but they don't have access to like the internet. Phones come on at nine and they get turned off at 10 o'clock at night. They lock in at 2.30, 2.45, turnover happens with the oncoming officer. They'll get unlocked at three o'clock, 3.45, they sit at the tables. Four o'clock, the porter comes in with the meal cart. After the meal, they'll do a cleanup. 10 o'clock at night, phones go off and 10.30, they lock in. We have recovery coaches too. They offer services, you know, to help the inmates when they get out, which has actually been really helpful. A lot of them, you know, they'll even provide them rides, you know, to a shelter if they don't have anywhere to go. They help them uh, get an assistance downtown. It's actually been very beneficial for the inmates. Our first program that we implemented to assist inmates was a jail recovery coach position. We identified with Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse that a lot of our inmates that were being released from jail were being picked up by their drug dealers at midnight because that was the standard release time. Well, we looked at that and we said, well, this is bad because we're seeing the same people come in and out, in and out like a revolving door. So maybe we should work at, number one, a better release time, and number two, better setting up an inmate for success when they're released. 90 days prior to release to hook them up with different services, employment, housing, substance abuse services, religious ed services, educational services, so that when the inmate is released, they're released to a more productive uh, plan or path. We 
want to keep your most dangerous people off the streets and out of our communities from uh, victimizing any other people. But we also want to make sure that we're putting a good degree of rehabilitation into that as well so that when people are released from the facility, we're not releasing the same person that came into the facility. If you have a, a structured and safe corrections facility, the community can feel confident that their inmates are secure and that they're not going to be escaping and, and causing havoc in their community, that their correction staff are safe in the performance of their job. But at the same time, when the inmate is released, they can feel confident in knowing that something has been done to set them up to become a better person.